Boom. All right. It is already 1130 on a Friday morning and here we are. We are live with the IT Hour. And thank you everyone for joining us. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. If you're all the way in uh, the Eurasian areas, we are glad to have you with us. As you can see, we have a smaller crowd today because Alexa is off gallivanting across the globe again. No, we're not jealous. Uh, we're hoping she has a, a good time. And thank you all for joining us. Yes, happy Friday, Nathan. Rob, glad you had that extra five minutes to get your coffee. Hope it helps with your spelling. Um, <laughs> we've got Rob from our MSP team. He's here to join us today, and he's going to give us a demo on our policy group template gallery. We're going to have a good time, as good as we can when we're a person short. It may be short today because... Uh, we don't have as much content to fill, but we will have a good time anyway. Uh, usually we start out by chit-chatting a little bit. Uh, so, so Rob knows how, how we're, how we're doing this. Uh, we chit chat a little bit. We talk about community and meetups and then Rob will do his demo. I, I didn't pull a lot of it news today. So if anyone has anything that they've noticed that they want to throw in the chat, we can uh, pull those and talk about that today. But first off, um, Rob, you got any good uh, weekend plans? Do anything fun? No, I, uh, I'm going to do the uh, the lame thing of uh, probably sleeping uh, if my kids let me and doing lawn work now that the, the it's no longer like 20 degrees here. So, um, so yeah, I get to put out some sod. That's my, that's my weekend. <laughs> so. okay. That sounds nice. I've had such a busy week that I'm looking forward to just kind of being quiet. Um, I started a pottery class. So Tuesday night I had pottery. Wednesday night I had an International Women's Day event with a local uh, women in tech group. And last night we had um, the IT networking group that I'm a part of. It's called Association of IT Professionals. Uh, we had a women in IT leadership panel, which I was the moderator for. So three nights in a row, I've been very busy and um, I'm tired. I I need like a night where it's just mellow and not doing much of anything. But today's Friday, so it's ice cream day. Uh, as regular viewers may know, I take my kids out for ice cream Friday afternoon after school. And that's our, our weekly jaunt to uh, Handel's ice cream. So kids are looking forward to it. So it looks like people are having some lag. So, um, oh no, are we are we okay, everybody? Are we are we good? You, you're getting the feed okay, or was it just Rob? Oh, everybody's um, getting lag. Oh dear. Well, <laughs> all right. Let me. It's all because uh, of that USB headset. <laughs> Rob, you broke everything. Why do you do these things? So we've got two Robs. So we've got Rob in the chat. And That's we've got Rob live. With There's two me, Robs so. in one place. It's, That's it. It's a. It's a. It's like inception. the Highlander. There can only be one. So now we're defining the laws of the Highlander. So yeah, there can be only one. We're gonna have to have a a big fight. Yep. You're gonna both have to travel to Scotland and fight each other. It's. It's gonna as long as it's thing. 80s music and it's raining and there's like ponytails, like I'll grow my hair magically between now and then, we'll be good. So yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so replace the hamster. That's what you need to do. Replace the hamster and all will be good. So I'm going to start out with a little bit of community news. Um, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of activity, so it's pretty good there. First off. If you haven't seen it, uh, Gerana posted about Android EMM. She wants to know about your current solution and features for EMM MDM because we are going to be doing some early access for our Android solution. And if you want to get in on that, drop in a, a note in the thread saying um, what you're looking for, what you're using right now. And then you can email us. I believe it's android at jumpcloud.com. That is in the thread. I will drop that link for you. Please go take a look at that. If you want to join and you haven't emailed already, 
uh, go ahead and do that because now's your chance to shape how that's going to go and give your feedback. I know all of you here who attend the IT hour are super shy and you never, ever speak up. So, um, no, that's not sarcasm at all. Please go give your opinion. We, we love to have you, you chime in and, and let us know what you want to see in the, uh, in the Android product. Uh, we had a question, um, in Carmichael had a question about keeping API usernames and passwords secret in a command script. So if you have some advice and want to chime in on that, please go do that. Uh, Nathan Virgin had a question about who's using password manager and your thoughts. So go chime in on his discussion there. Uh, Jurgen has a thread about a how-to about how to export folders and items from LastPass into GemCloud Password Manager. So he's got a nice set of instructions there if you want to take a look. David has posted the monthly JumpShot newsletters for the product for um, both uh, customers and MSPs. We got a couple of blog posts on having depth or breadth in IT say that five times fast, as well as a blog post from Pam on do I have imposter syndrome? Um, had an interesting discussion on imposter syndrome last night on our um, tech leadership panel about dealing with that and overcoming it. And really, um, I don't think you ever completely overcome it, but there are ways to manage it. So definitely go check out Pam's uh, post on that. And then uh, Sean wrote, uh, our, our Sean song wrote a how-to on Directory Insight SIEM integrations. So check those out as well. Those will all, all those links will be in the recap that we do each week. And I guess... I'm the one that has to post that this week since, again, <clears throat> Alexa uh, is out of the office. So I will do that, and that'll be in the IT Hour group as usual. On the meetup front, uh, Alexa is going to send a survey to ask about future meetups and some questions around topics and what you want to see and how you want to shape that program as well. So please, please make sure you look out for that. If you aren't already a member of the meetup groups, please go join the city nearest you. Uh, we're probably going to have March be uh, all virtual, which means no matter where you are, you can attend anyone you want. And we'll probably just do a, a couple of them with a different, couple different time zones so you can join which one's convenient for you. So uh, I'm putting the meetup link in the chat as well. Please uh, feel free to join any of those this, this month. When she gets back next week, she'll go ahead and post those so you can be ready for that. Um, Rob says Spice works for the win. Use a secure credential file in PowerShell and just call that file for the login instead of hard coding it into the script. Very cool, Rob. Thank you for that. Um, and with that, Rob, I'm going to hand it over to you so you can talk to us about the policy group template gallery and uh, what is new there. Tell us uh, what it's for, why that's happening, and then... Uh, Let's see what it does. Cool, cool. Well, thank you, Becky. Um, so quick little introduction of myself. Um, so my name is Rob, obviously, and I am a product manager here. I primarily work with them, uh, the MSP product, so to helping develop the MTP of the multi-tenant portal uh, to make our product shine and be awesome and helpful and useful for our managed service provider partners. Um, I also used to be a technician for an MSP. Um, I've also came from the help desk uh, background as a help desk manager. So I've kind of done like the admin things. And I'm finally um, able to be um, able to the, build the products that I would have loved to have used as an admin. So, um, so with all that in mind, I definitely understand your pains and the, the, uh, the little bit of, um, you know, 
I guess the struggles you may encounter on a daily basis using any product out there. And this is also like a shameless plug. If you ever, you know, are looking, if you are a managed service provider or a technician for one, and you feel free to reach out to me, you can easily find me, um, you know, rob.mcgrath at jumpcloud.com. We're always looking to hear customer feedback and uh, learn more about how to make our products awesome. So that's my spiel about myself. But I'd be happy to show you guys uh, something that we have actually just released a few weeks ago to the you know the public, and this is available to all organizations um, within Jump Cloud. So this is live right now if you want to do this, and it is showing uh, is basically a policy group template gallery, which is aimed at helping you or anybody out there that's looking to use Jump Cloud uh, quickly achieve something like a, a baseline across their orgs if they're an MSP. So you very go quickly go from zero to you know something. Um, right out of the box, or if you're just trying to kick the tires and learn more about Jump Cloud, or just haven't ever, ever actually done a trial, you can actually use this uh, right out of the box and get uh, several hours of work saved by simply clicking one button. So I'm going to share my screen real quick, and I will show you this because this is uh, actually directly from customer feedback of when they want to come in here, they want to get the most out of policies and policy groups. So. I'm going to show you what this looks like for an MSP. And I, this is a brand new organization. I literally just created this organization from a trial like 20 minutes ago. So this is completely blank. I haven't touched anything. Um, and the previous ones, you know, I'm sure you've all used different tools. I've used several tools out there from, you know, uh, Mass360 from MDM and getting like policies and devices up to speed, you know, or I've even used Intune for that. Um, you know, uh, Workspace One, like all these different solutions out there, I've, I've had to use them. And I know that generally it's, it's a daunting task to go from a zero state to something functional um, within, you know, hours, let alone, like it could probably take days to get like to a spot where you can successfully test this on your devices or even use this in production. It's even more daunting. So this is a brand new, completely blank MTP, which is uh, how I would have, if I had a lot of organizations, I would see them all in here. And when I come in here, I'm going to go into this org. Now, this is to help you go from um, nothing to something very, very quickly and get to that moment where you can truly see the value of Jump Cloud happen right in front of you. So normally, previous to this, if I wanted to set up policies on my devices, I would go into policy management and I'd be brought up to this menu and have a carousel up here to kind of help me get started. And I could push this plus sign and add policies. This is very similar to any you know, platform out there. We have a ton of policies for Windows devices, Mac, Linux, iOS, and soon we'll have Android policies up there as well, which is fantastic. Um, but obviously the daunting task is if you've never been in here, or even if you have been in here, getting started can be hard to do. So I'm a, I want to come in here and I can click on one of these accounts and I'll say, okay, uh, you know, block Microsoft accounts. This is a very simple one because it only has a single checkbox, but there are lots that have configurations that you want to go through or, um, you know, and you don't know necessarily where, what other people have done. Um, in the past and you know just reading this to see what it does even if I do check this box and save it that still took about 20 30 seconds um, so this is where actually we wanted to help you guys out to get started and we're actually excited to see how this works um, not only now and how customers are going to use it, its current state but how this is going to grow over time because obviously getting your devices um, into a state where you can have them either have a baseline across all of your tenants as an MSP or to achieve some kind of compliance goals or anything like that. We want to see how we can grow with this and how our customers get to use it. So there's now a button here. So if you've used policy groups in the past, there's a new section here that says policy group from template. And what this does now is this brings up a curated list. Now these are policy groups that we have configured with the policies inside them that we have also gone, gone through. And thankfully, Jump Cloud has a plethora of former IT admins and MSP admins as well um, that we have bounced these ideas off their brains, brought them to, you know, brought their policies to them, say, hey, what are best practices? If you had an MSP or if you had a help desk today or you were running this, um, how would you configure these policies for your devices? And we've compiled all these into some three and three basic levels. You have light security, standard security and enhanced security. And we've broken these out into different devices. So you have Apple, Windows, and Linux devices. So I'm gonna click here and I can go ahead and read these. These are the policies that are contained in here, but me going in here and just clicking create, I just made a policy group and also the configured policies inside here with all of the settings that I wanted to mess with. So if I came in here, I can set the you know, standard security as a 600 second lockout on a time. Now that would took way longer if I, just to read this, 
than it would have taken for me to just simply click that button and configure all those policies. So we're excited about this because this is just the beginning. This is very expandable for us. We hope to build upon this to help you guys achieve compliance goals. Um, and obviously this is a nice home that as things grow and as we add new policies, that I would envision you know, a time where we have not only uh, Apple devices or Windows devices, but also a Linux devices policy group template um, where they can come in here and you simply click this and boom, your devices that are connected to, or that are Android will have the same kind of benefits as Apple or Windows or Linux. Um, now for MSPs, little little teaser for you guys, we're actually working on allowing you guys to take your existing policy groups, so the same ease of creation from you know the one that Jump Cloud has created. We're, uh, very soon we're going to have ones where you can take a policy group from like let's say customer ABC and you want to use it in customer DEF instead of recreating all those policies because you pretty much are going to use the same ones oftentimes as an MSP across your different tenants. You'll be able to copy that one, save that as a template, and then pull that down in another organization, hopefully saving you lots and lots of time because that is a very, <laughs> it's a painful afternoon to rebuild policies and policy groups for something that you want to do very quickly. So that's a, an exciting new development for that. Uh, definitely is that this is the start of something, um, you know, exciting, I believe. And I do believe that over time we'll be able to really grow this offering. Um, we'll be able to see how our customers are using it and see the, su the success stories around that. But also this will be a nice home for um, helping you guys achieve your compliance goals and your security goals. And uh, yeah, just, we're just excited to see how you guys get this in your hands and uh, kind of run with it. And again, we're very open to feedback. Feel free to reach out to me uh, with this as well. Or, you know, obviously anybody on the Jump Cloud team will be able to walk you through this. And yeah, this is just, uh, you know, the start of something, you know, start of something great. And at least when it comes to helping you guys get started from zero to nothing, that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool to be compliant within, you know, 10 seconds <laughs> as opposed to uh, several hours of reading and clicking and configuring. So, but yeah, that's about uh, what I have to say about that. But thanks, Becky. <laughs> so. <laughs> awesome. Um, I don't see any questions so far, but I also know that, <clears throat> excuse me, I know that people were struggling a little bit with um, loading Crowdcast. So we're, some people are watching on the YouTube live stream uh, and some people are watching here, but I'm seeing really great feedback. They're thrilled, excited, really looking forward for uh, Android and all of that. So um, did you have any ETA on Android yet? So Android would be from another team, uh, so I'm not on that team. Um, I know it's coming up soon, and there's uh, you know early access talks coming around. I know it's very soon, then. Um, but but yeah, when you see that and when that is live, we're gonna try to get that in there and like the pre-configured policies for Android devices have that built into here. So it's a very cool solution, and uh, yeah, I'm too, totally excited to see how this grows. Oh, that, that reminds me, um, the PM for the Android devices, uh, we are talking in Slack and he is uh, planning on coming on and talking roadmap and uh, going to do a demo when the time comes. So that will be that will be really great. So what they are doing right now is asking for volunteers for early access and going to get feedback. Um, so I said this earlier, so if anyone joined late, um, we, we posted in the community and back up in the chat asking for volunteers for the, for the Android early access. Uh, and when that is getting closer to release or right as it releases, that PM will come on and do a demo and talk about roadmap for that. So I am talking to him already about that happening. So that'll be that'll be really great when that comes about too um and rob even if you only have one android um device but you still want to uh give give some feedback and things like that then you know it won't it won't hurt to to volunteer and give it a try luke is saying would love to see some updates for conditional access And yeah, those those policies I know are in a like a separate section. Um, but yeah, I've, that's it's a uh, definitely good feedback. 
But uh, I did see a question about existing policies. So the um, so the way the policies are is it, it's usually based on name. So like it will check if that name exists. So if you have like screen lockout and it's Windows policy and you do screen lockout again, it will say that that's already duplicated. So in theory, yes, the mechanism will not overwrite, but rather it will reference the existing policy. Um, so if you have one of the exact same name, in this case, it's unlikely, but for a, like an MSP, if they do have, if they start using the custom policy group templates, that is something that could possibly happen. And we would refer to um, the existing policy and add that to the policy group. So if there's screen lockout and you use it from, you pull it down from a uh, policy group template, it will use, it will reference the local copy of that. So it will not create a duplicated policy. Awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Let me go over and check. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see any on, on YouTube right now. Any other questions about this? I want to give people time to jump in with that. Because of the delay, some people are watching it on YouTube, so it may take a moment for them to hear what we are, are saying and everything. Um, and also, like I said, we didn't have a ton of... We didn't have a ton of uh, news today either. So this may be a really short IT hour today, which is fine because, um, you know, some some days we need a, a little bit of time to uh, recoup and relax. Uh, so Keith is asking any planned enhancements you can speak to. Would this be with the conditional access policies? Um... I personally, I'm personally don't know, like, I don't have anything I could really speak to for that. It would be a separate, um, like a separate team or separate um, section for that. So, but I know they're always working on it. And that's obviously an increasingly important aspect of basically everything, um, especially with all the, the recent news. And if you've been following the news around, uh, um, following the news around, like some of the bigger leaks and the, you know, breaches and all that stuff with, you know, other competitors out there and it, it's a uh, conditional access would have blocked a lot of the pain that's happened in the world recently. So yeah, definitely on our radar though. Yeah. I think he's wanting to know with what you, um, what you just demoed. Oh, with the policy. Yeah. I mean, with these, um, the, the big, the big one will be the custom ones that's coming to MSPs uh, in particular. So they'll be able to build out policy groups and not have to recreate their work manually and they'll be able to reference it. Um, so that way, if you do onboard a customer, for instance, and uh, you have 50 policies you've already used another customer successfully, you don't have to rebuild them manually um, and you can replicate them very quickly. This is also particularly helpful um, if you are using, you know, us for some kind of compliance measure and that standard changes, you'll be able to update that. So <laughs> these comments are pretty funny. Yeah. YouTube is ahead of Crowdcast. <laughs> I'm not sure how, um, but apparently if bad lip reading, uh, Rob in the comments is doing bad lip reading. So <laughs> while you're bringing up cow sweaters, no, no idea. Um, yeah, Rob, you might want to take a, a, a lip reading class to kind of improve <laughs> on that. And Keith is asking anything specifically on compliance levels for CMMC, PCI and others. That's a goal. Um, you know, I know our legal team would not be happy if I was like, yeah, we're doing PCI compliance. <laughs> like that's a, you know, a, a fine line to, uh, to be careful with. Uh, but that is definitely something we would love to work towards is building upon, uh, you know, existing standards and being able to say, hey, you use this policy group, this will bring you closer to X compliance level you want to get to. So definitely, definitely that route um, is what, where we are striving for. So but yeah, I don't have a, a prediction of when like a PCI compliance, you know, Windows device policy group template will come in there because that's just a, it's a risky thing to say, hey, you're PCI compliant from this. <laughs> so again, legal team would strangle me probably <laughs> if I did something like that. So yeah, but one day. Yeah. Hi, Chuck. Hi, Adam, if you're watching. <laughs> 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 Not yet, but they probably will later. Um and Nathan would love to see policy groups based on specific compliance standards. Oh so. yeah. That's, that's definitely where my brain went to. Like when we were coming up with this, um, was exactly that kind of standard. Um, but yeah, that's, that is, you know, we, we want to make, we want to make sure we do it well and also get this mechanism and everything in place 
to build upon this. This is just the beginning for it, though. Yeah, and it's kind of tough with those um, standards changing uh, over time, like like NIST and CIS. Uh, you know, Luke is mentioning that. Uh, but without au something auditing those, it would be limited a bit. So, yeah, I mean, it gets tricky with those. We want to kind of, uh, I guess, kind of address those, but also leave them flexible enough that as those standards change, then the people can can adjust them as needed. And uh, Rob's light, uh, right that uh, PCI compliance can pretty much break all the others. We had this discussion last week where um, he was struggling because we were talking about compliance and PCI uh, is one of those ones where he was struggling with, um, what was it, Rob? Was it your insurance that was wanting you to do certain things and it didn't match with PCI because it is so picky about passwords and and how you how you connect things and everything so it uh it's bad enough getting the users to change their password only every 365 days let alone the 90 day requirement so that was that was one of the things that that part of it um pci is just so much trickier than the nist requirements and things like that oh yeah insurance yeah. wanted no password change requirements but pci demands 90 day changes and they were butting heads about that oh yeah so um i've been yeah. in compliance um i've been in the pro like in the you know projects around compliance and actually like uh, trying to achieve it and it is like <laughs> which which hand do you want to make angry right now the left or the right and either one's going to slap you in the face <laughs> so it's uh you know conflicting messages left and right and it's also just it just creates pain and usually leads to the person you know they change their password every 365 days and all the changes is a one exclamation point added to the end or something like that. Um, or they change the number to the, the current year as opposed to the last year. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's hmm. <laughs> 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 again, as, as we talk about, uh, what, what is your biggest risk? It's your users. <laughs> yep. It's always the biggest risk, but PCI is so weird because, um, if you don't do it, then you, you lose your, you, you know, and they audit you, you can completely lose your ability yep. to, to do um, uh, processing and things like that. And it's, it's a mess. Uh, Keith, Rob is, uh, Rob, Keith is giving you some advice to say, you know, make less than 50 million revenue per year. And there you go. That's, that's all you need to do. It'll lower standards and you don't have to worry about it. I'm sure, I'm sure his company would, would um, happily agree with making less money. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're talking about the stick of understanding. Is that like a sequel pipe? <laughs> Sequel.call.lead.pipe. I don't database. So <laughs> <laughs> insert, uh, insert it joke here. All right. So I've got some, do we have, I'll give people just a tiny bit longer for um let's see if it catches up with youtube they've got a comment on youtube that says youtube is much better today so that is good but no questions over there um stick of understanding is level one clue by four is level two hmm so what is level the bat of diplomacy is that level three What's level four? I th I thought clue by four would be level four, so I'm I'm confused now. See now you're you're messing up my hierarchical order here, but that's okay. I guess everybody's different. Uh, I only had the time to pull one quick news item. Um, I don't know if you've heard this yet, but the UK government is uh, proposing an online safety bill and WhatsApp is saying it would leave the UK if the government tries to do this um, because it would undermine the app's end-to-end -end encryption. So 
obviously, obviously y'all know that that would that end to end encryption ensures that only the user and the person that are communicating can uh, see or read what is sent. Um, the government and some child protection charities argue that such encryption hinders efforts to combat the growing problem of online child abuse. And under this bill, the government would enforce WhatsApp to apply content moderation policies that are impossible to implement without removing end-to-end -end encryption. And if WhatsApp refuses to do so, it would face fines. And then if they applied that, they would have to apply it pretty much globally, which then means it would um, change the security for all their markets, not just the UK. Um, I've been seeing some chatter about this in other groups that I'm a part of. Uh, because I have friends who use apps like this, not just WhatsApp, but um, Threema and, and others because they just prefer to, you know, not have not have some snooping with their with their communications and things like that. I have friends who are in security and uh, they they like to keep their personal communications private. So what I find interesting about that is they're already chatting about this, too, because some of them are are in the UK. Um, so I don't know if any of you all have have seen this or or started chatter about this as well. But um, I mean, we've we've seen this you know, in the last few years with the FBI trying to get Apple and um, others to potentially let them jailbreak phones for um, terrorists and things like that, you know, like when they want to um, figure out what's going on with, um, with those, those, um, what, when they take someone's phone and things like that. So um, I find it interesting that the, the UK is coming at it from a different angle. Um, I don't know. What do you all think about that and what they're trying to do? Okay. I saw in a similar vein with that news that they, uh, that they were looking at, it was also, I think it was signal was also going to like basically shut down all their UK like operations. If, if this was actually passed, they're just going to stop working on any devices there. Yeah. I'm forgetting right now. Um, I'm forgetting right now which uh, which app is used a lot in Russia. Telegram. Telegram. Yes, I was also reading something recently about Telegram and um, whether or not that was being used to spy on people in in Russia or not, because, um, someone had been arrested and the police were telling them exactly what had been in their messages. And, and those people were concerned that telegram was possibly sharing their information, but what may have been happening was, um, someone nearby spying on them because they, there, there may have been like some surveillance nearby too, but there was a debate as to whether, you know, it was, it was being shared from the company themselves or whether they were under surveillance. So there's just a lot going on with uh, security and privacy right now. Jeff says, takes a blue bubble, green bubble to a whole new level. Oh, you're ba only basic texting. That's cute. I know I had a friend that, um, they switch phones and uh, I was like, yay, you're a blue bubble now. I don't know why. I don't know why that's so important. Um, and Rob says, oh, yes, the FBI, half a decade, and they still don't understand what the phrase end-to-end -end encryption means. Um, I, I, you know, privacy, basic privacy, can't we... Why do we have to give up our privacy just because there are people out there that do bad things? That doesn't mean we all do bad things. You know, just you figure out how to deal with them. They're going to, there are always going to be people, be people who abuse things, but that doesn't mean that you need to break everyone else's privacy just because of that. And um, Kelly 
This is another example of legislation missing the mark and trying to solve a problem. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's like the people in government a lot of times who are trying to pass these things don't understand the basics of the technology they're trying to control. <laughs> Rob says solve a problem. I thought they were the ones that make the problems. Sometimes it feels that way. Now, as we start to get, I think, younger people in government who are more digital natives, that will change a little bit because I think they will understand things a, a little bit better. We've got um, someone here locally in North Carolina. Um, his name's Jeff Jackson. And I get, like, I do not follow politicians usually, but he sends out a newsletter and he's a, he's a freshman uh, representative for the state. And he has been regularly sharing the whole experience of him going to Congress for the first time and the act of joining committees and things like as it happens. And it's actually really cool to follow that along, follow along with him um, because he's just sharing as much as he can, whatever's not, you know, like top secret because he's on like the military, one of the military committees, but it's really interesting to see someone younger doing stuff like this and seeing how differently he approaches it compared to people who have been there a thousand years, like some of the older, um, you know, older senators and, and Congress people. So it's, it's going to be interesting as we get more younger people in government to see how it, how it shifts. And I hope fully it shifts in a more positive way. Although some of the other younger members of the government, how do I put this nicely? Some of what I'm seeing, not so much. It's kind of scary. So there's two extremes. Let's just put it that way. Uh, so after Rob said solve a problem, I thought they're the ones that make the problems. Then Kelly said, well, they are, but they package it as a solution. They try. Uh, oh, like CRM vendors. Gotcha. Ooh, ouch. Oh, we don't have any of those on today. Um, a backdoor for someone is a backdoor for everyone. Kelly says, it's just a question of time before bad guys can use the same thing to get into people's phones. Exactly. And that's that's the big concern. If the government builds a backdoor, we know it's going to be so poorly done that other people are going to be able to exploit it too. And then there's no, there's no security anymore. Um, so all that, I mean, let's face it. Oh, look, <laughs> my kids, my kids' pictures. We all have our entire lives wrapped up in these things at this point, right? Like if you have a phone that you use every day um, and you use it for work and you use it for home, I've got Apple Pay, I've got my email, I've got Facebook and Twitter and, and all the things on here, right? My whole life is pretty much encapsulated in this at, at this point. I've gotten to the point where if I go to the store and I don't take my phone, I feel weird. I feel weird that I don't have this little device with me. I actually use it to pay at the grocery store now. So then I don't have a way to pay. Well, I do if I have my wallet with me. But we're all so wrapped up in these things now that... If someone can get into these devices, they can steal a lot of your identity. They can impersonate you on social. They can get into your bank accounts. They can change your passwords to a lot of stuff. If you've got like your iCloud keychain and things, um, you can get into a, a lot of stuff for people. So ha having some semblance of security on these things is really important for pretty much everyone. So no, we don't want someone to be able to 
easily break into them, especially not the government, because they do not have a good track record of keeping stuff like that safe. Uh, Brett says the OG Big Brother liked being able to eavesdrop on every conversation, regardless of place or context. Yeah. And then uh, Rob says, there's a reason I enabled encryption as soon as it was available on Android and don't do face ID type logins. Courts have upheld that fingerprints are equivalent to passwords and police cannot force you to unlock. No such protection with face ID yet. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty good, pretty good point. Uh, so we need to push for that. Number one, to have face ID protected like fingerprint. I was reading on mac rumors that they were working on an under display touch id for um apple phones but then i also saw that it's kind of delayed if i can scroll back up and <laughs> unlikely to remove face id to move face ID components under the iPhones display display until 2025 at the earliest. So we've got a little bit longer before um, face ID is going to go away from this little thing here. And I don't know how long it's going to be before we might have fingerprint under the glass. That would be cool because I actually prefer the fingerprint to face ID. I, I dislike, I dislike face ID a lot. Um, but especially when I'm wearing a mask, I finally had to enable it where I could use it under a mask because I still mask up everywhere. Kelly says, that's the reason why you always hard restart your iPhone if you end up in a situation. Absolutely. Because, uh, or if you, um, if you try to unlock it a bunch of times really quickly and get your password wrong, it will also lock it to where you have to use your passcode. Jeff says power volume up plus power disables your face ID until you type in your password. Those are good because then they, they cannot compel you. They're not supposed to be able to compel you to type in your password. Those are good things to know. And Rob thinks there's an emergency lock where you rabbit hit the power button like five times and it forces passcode login. I don't know. Let's see. Yep. Enter passcode. Your passcode is required to enable face ID. So it is now locked. So yeah, if you just hit it a bunch of times, it will force a passcode. So I cannot use my face ID now. So um, definitely some things to know for security purposes, because, you know, we're all about security, right? You want to be secure? So thank you for those tips. Those are good tips there in the mm -hmm. chat. Not that I've ever had a need for the information like that out here in the anarchist jurisdiction of Portland, Oregon. No, not at all, Kelly. No reason at all. So <laughs> with that, we've done a pretty good job of burning away almost 45 minutes of our hour. So um, if in the chat you have any other topics you want to bring up before we sign off for the weekend. Oh, that was weird. I just disappeared for a moment. I didn't do anything. I did not touch anything. Crowdcast is just, it's uh, doing something today. I will send them feedback. Kelly says, thanks for coming by, Rob. We were glad to have you. Um, glad to be here. I'm glad yeah. to come back hopefully again in the future. Absolutely. Come back and talk about the MSP stuff or any other updates that you have in the future. <laughs> I'm sure the other Rob, we're all thankful that you're also here, other Rob. Um, original Rob, you were here before me, so. Oh yeah, the, he's uh, here. He's here every one. week. <laughs> every week. Yeah, no one thanks me. <laughs> um, he did say Android has something like that, but the rapid power button press starts SOS mode. So maybe not try that one. Yeah, we'll see if we can figure out what Android does that um, kind of locks your phone too. But yeah, thank you everyone. And Keith is glad to see what's new and we will keep we will keep uh, a check on what's coming up new. Uh, by the way, we are taking next week off. So just to know 
break next week and then we will be back on the 24th after that. So have a fun extra Friday off next week and we will see you in two weeks. And with that, have a fantastic weekend and we'll see you on the flip side. Bye all. Bye guys.